Check. Audio check for caption is from NTID. Test, one, two, three, four. I saw your log on. Checking audio levels. Is that good? You're happy? Okay, one, can you test a little bit more? I'm trying to show people what it's gonna look like. Thank you. And who am I working with tonight? Hi, Beth. I wish I was in Nashville. I'm in Rochester and it's raining. <laughs> this is Peter. I will be with you all night long. If anything happens, just let me know. Um, and uh, Bill will be monitoring, it, monitoring your input and uh, audio levels from Master Control. And we have two different interpreters working with you tonight. I'm gonna have them introduce themselves to you. The interpreters are Gail Macias and Nicole. Uh, Nicole will be here for the first team and then Jenna will be here for the rest of the evening, but Gail will be here all night. You're welcome.
This is just a message to the captionist um, on the agenda. We see that there are remarks from Jerry Buckley, and Jerry Buckley will be replaced by K Gary Beam in the remarks. And it's B-E-H-M is his last name.
Good evening, everyone. Come on, let's see some energy. Good evening. Much better, much better. My name is Sarah Smania, and I will be your MC for the evening. I would like to ask Gary Beam to join me up front. Jerry Buckley is out of town, and so Gary will be giving the opening remarks this evening. This is Gary. Hi, everyone. It's hard to believe I was speaking with Chris. This is the seventh annual Next Big Idea competition. I remember the first group, and uh, forgive me, I was using the wrong sign name. Uh, this is really Chris's idea. And so uh, ZVRS is partnering with NTID to make it an annual event. It's a great project. Chris knew that we had innovative students. And you know, we, we talked about the idea. That's how the next big idea was born. And seven years later, we're still involved. I've been involved in a few uh, with it in for a few years, but now I'm in a different role. It's a thrill to see this competition every year. The reason being is all of the students who are involved are celebrated. We know we have our first, second, and third prizes, and of course, they're treasured. But for this competition, I think every student who participates is a winner. Because throughout the process, each of the students grows with the skills, the uh, soft skills, interacting with people, their business skills, and their technical skills. So they grow in a large way. And often, when I see alumni from the Next Big Idea program, they're thankful to the program and thankful to the competition. And they're much better students as a result of this competition as well. So the Next Big Idea is one of the best events on campus, if you ask me, hands down. So thank you to ZVRS for your continued support. We really appreciate your investment on the part of the Next Big Idea. This is serious money. This is not a 5 or $10 prize. We're talking thousands of dollars in prize money. It's a serious investment, a serious investment in our students. So we hope you have a fun, great evening. And um, you know, um, I never understand how the judges come to their final decision, because I'll see groups and I'll be like, oh, I think they're going to be the winners. And sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. But let's welcome you to the evening. And thank you again, judges, for being here. And thank you, ZBRS. We're going to ask the judges to e each introduce themselves, tell us who you are and what your position is. And actually, I'm not a judge, but my name is Joe Riggio. I am a manager in business development working with ZVRS. I am just collecting all of the judges' scores this evening. So he is our score person this evening. Good evening. My name is Julian Maywa. I am the creative content person at ZVRS. Hi, my name is Don Marie Cagliano. I'm the ZVRS business manager for sales. Hi, my name is Chris Wagner. I am the chief operations officer for ZVRS. Hi, my name is Howard Rose Rosenblum. I do not work for Z, but I am honored to be a guest to judge this evening. I work for the National Association for the Deaf. I'm the CEO. Hi, my name is Corey Burton. I am the ZVRS Director of Enterprise and Account Manager. Sarah, we have a great panel of judges this evening. And um, boy, I'm mixing up Chris's name sign as well. So Chris is going to come up, Chris Wagner, and he's going to give his remarks to the audience this evening. This is Chris. I am thrilled to be here. This is my favorite event. And as Gary mentioned, this is the seventh year. And I do remember, almost eight years ago, sitting down with Gary. We were working on a project. And we were talking about hiring co-op students. And we noticed with the co-op students that we worked with, while they had the technical skills, they were lacking soft skills. And so we were talking about that. And we were talking about an idea that Gar Gary had. And I flew back to Florida. 
And when I got back there, I texted Jerry, and I texted him about this idea. The three of us got together, and seven years later, here we are in our seventh annual Next Big Idea competition. This competition gives students a real world opportunity to learn hands-on skills to, they really become better people as a result of this whole process. And um, we can see the students develop and so we hire some of the students who have graduated from the Next Big Idea. Like Julian, I believe you were in the first cohort in the Next Big Idea. So we've hired some of those who are alums from this competition. We're honored that Howard Rosenblum is our guest judge. Uh, it would be nice to bring in a different perspective, we thought, and so we're thrilled that he accepted that role this evening. And we're looking forward to a great competition this evening. Thank you so much. Sarah, you can see the prizes that are will be awarded this evening uh, for first, second, and third place. And I'm going to talk about the rules and the prizes. Uh, the first thing for this evening, you cannot take videos. If you want to take a short video clip or a short picture, that's fine, but no extended videos while the teams are presenting. Also, we have uh, the captioner is captioning. You see the three-line captioning. If you would like the captioning and you want the full script, you can get the link from Jazzy. She's um, on the side of the room, and she can give you the link so you can get the captioning that way. We will start. We'll be bringing the teams in here. We'll ask them to introduce themselves, names, majors, years, and hometown, and then they will have 10 minutes. Once their 10 minutes starts, I will sit over to the side. The teams will make their presentation. If they are go beyond the 10 minute mark, I will interrupt their presentation because they must end. I will not give them a warning. They have to keep their own time while they're giving the presentation. After 10 minutes, the judges can ask any questions that they choose to ask to the teams. And then um, there will be a short commercial and then we'll bring the next team on. In between every team, we'll have commercials, and then there will be, the judges will dis deliberate. Uh, we will take do the raffles, and then we have cert certificates that we are raffling, and then we have the GoPro Fusion, which is a great prize. So uh, I'm sure one of you will be very lucky this evening. I'm sure you're all looking forward to hoping to win that prize. So who is ready to start this evening? I want to hear some more noise, good. Good, good, good. There is a clarifying question. So the raffle, we have uh, gift certificates for 50, 150, and $250. Am I correct? Um, I was just looking at the, 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 what the paper told me. We'll see at the end when we actually do the raffle how much they're worth. And the gift certificates, um, how you get, if you don't know if you have gotten your raffle ticket, go outside. They've got tickets outside so you can partake and um, be eligible for the raffle. So we're going to ask Team Yovada to come forward. Okay, they're on their way apparently. Good evening. Do you two know the rules? First of all, audience doesn't know who you are. This is Michael. Hello, my name is Michael Liam. I'm a third year mechanical engineering technology major. And I'm sorry, where are you from? Michael, I'm from Washington State. This is Joey. Hello, my name is Joey. I'm a fourth year financial major and I am from New Jersey. Sarah, all right, you have 10 minutes. Are you two ready? 
Good luck. Joey, is there a clicker? Is there a timekeeper? Where can we see the time? Up front? Joey, can we start? Is there a timer? Joey, thank you for coming tonight. I want to explain about Yovado and the point being, Michael, the knee, where did the word knee come from? Joey, the word is from Greece. And we want to show this in our PowerPoint. Michael. You might be wondering what the problems are that we're trying to solve with this. In general, in the world, there are some serious injuries with ACL. And that is the top, in the top 10 most common injuries for sports. And your ACL is found in your knee. With many knee braces, they are not protective of your ACL. So what we envision is having a knee brace that protects your ACL while playing contact sports. Often with braces that are sold commercially, we see there's very many problems. They're bulky, they're uncomfortable. In any sort of snow sports, they're uncomfortable to wear with your protection. There are many consumer complaints regarding current knee braces out on the market, and our goal is to improve products regarding knee braces. Joey, as Michael had just mentioned, we are talking about the ACL, and we do want to talk about the ACL. And the ACL is your anterior cruciate ligament, and that is between your bones and your knees, and it provides structure, and if it doesn't matter if you're running, doing any sort of athletic activity, that is there to be able to help your joint move. So again, you can see the anatomy here of the knee, and we're going to show you the concept of how your knee moves in any sort of athletic activity competition. Does anybody know why the video won't show? Oh, we're having some PowerPoint issues. So while you're walking, this is how your knee is in motion. Your knee can't, the two bones in your knee should not be going back and forth. If that happens fast in sports, say for example you're running and you stop very fast or you trip and fall while you're playing a basketball game, your ACL can be torn just like that. Michael. Inside your bones is your anterior cruciate ligament. So in your between your two bones, your ACL can tear just like that if your knee moves in two different directions. <laughs> Joey, sorry about that. There are roughly 150,000 to 200,000 people on a yearly basis who tear their ACL. And that's just, we are trying to eliminate how many people are injured through ACL injuries. There is a roughly $6 billion spent on ACL surgeries per year, and approximately 30,000 are spent per each surgery. And for an individual who does have ACL surgery, it requires six years to, or six months to about a year to completely heal and get back to their irregular activities. Another interesting fact about ACL injuries is that 70% of ACL injuries actually do happen in non-contact sports. There are gender risks for ACL injuries as well. Females have a two to 10 times greater risk of having an ACL injury compared to their male counterparts. Michael. We want to focus on the Yovado solution. Again, we already spoke about how we would like to improve braces and the brace system. In the current market, braces use a hinging system, which we will show on the next slide. We want to replace that hinging system with a more comfortable system that when athletes use it for walking or running, they don't even feel like they're wearing a brace. Often athletes don't feel comfortable while they're wearing the brace, and that is one complaint that consumers have. 
So with the new design, we want to build a new system that athletes are more comfortable wearing in their activity. In the new system, we will be using the bearings. So this is the concept of our design. This is not a real design. This is just our basic concept that we are trying to figure out to get to our final idea. In our product model, we are using the bearing chain knee support, as I had already mentioned. And this can show you where the chains will be running alongside. And on the side, there will be a series of uh, bearings in there. So again, individuals can use this and still participate normally in their activity. We also have the T-guard, which is elastic material that connects to hold the support in the knee brace. And we do have different designs to accommodate for different customers' needs. So we can get an idea from the customer of what their needs are, and we can accommodate it for what they need. We also will be using a microfiber material because it absorbs moisture, and it's more comfortable to wear. So when athletes are using it in their activity, it won't be overly drenched with their sweat. Additionally, we'll be using some mesh fabric, and that's a breathable material. So again, when athletes are sweating during their sport, it's not going to be entrapped within the material. As I had mentioned before, in traditional braces, they have a hinged method, and that is something that we want to change because it's very bulky in the brace. So you can see on the right, that is our new design with the Yovado bearings. Again, this is our concept design, but you can see running alongside the brace, you have the bearings that are connected to each other that go from top to bottom. So with the bearings, they can move in 360 degrees, and they keep it, the brace in a straight line, so that way there's, it's protective of the athlete's ACL. With the brace that we've been discussing, the Yovado one, you can see that it is strong and it is big, but it's designed for different purposes. With the Yovado, the whole point is to protect and support after an athlete has surgery if they tear their ACL. So they can use it for their sports once they come back. If with the compression sleeves, that's more of a release, that's for sore muscles or if there's a light injury, but that can prevent from an ACL being torn during sports. So again, in this chart here, you can see the different types of braces and what they prevent. And if you can see, they have the wrap around, and that's just using around your joints, and that's and that has Velcro. I mean, there's a lot of customer complaints about the Velcro because it can fall off during activity. So with the hinged, the compression sleeves, and the wraparounds, we want to take the benefits from all three and use those to create our product, the Yovado Brace. Joey. And this is our development budget. And we've been doing some market research about some numbers, and we wanted to try to figure out more in depth of the numbers that we will use for this project. So first, we had mentioned that we're going to be using the microfiber materials, and that's something that we know that will match our concept for the brace. So most, the most important part is that we want to be able to interview the potential consumers for this material to figure out what their needs are going to be. So what, again, we want to be able to take this feedback from the customers, take that, and then be able to put it in our design. If our customers are not pleased with what we design, it would be a waste of time and resources. So how are we able to prevent and have the chance of an ACL injury is what we are doing in our development budget and part of that our research that we are doing. Part of the budget that we have is going to be invested into prototypes, which will be nice so that we can provide that to the customers to try before. This is our timeline that we have in place. So after tonight's Next Big Idea competition, we will do some team expansion, meaning that we're going to be working within our networks to be able to find people from different disciplines to work together and become a great product for the future. And after that, we're going to be doing some customer discovery and reaching out to the community and ask what they need and what they envision for our brace. And after that, we will continue with more research and just to make sure that what we are designing will accommodate to the market that we will be aiming towards. Once we test, we do the blueprint, blueprint development, we'll be doing our first prototyping and do some testing in there. 
And again, we want to do some post-test modification as well and then go back to prototype redesign. Thank you for your support. We really appreciate you listening to our product ideas, and we hope that we have the support for our future. Michael, thank you very much. Are there any questions from our judges? Do you have any questions for the group? So um, it looks like a very um, great design, and um, I'm just wondering how did you determine and compare you the comparison chart? Uh, well, how did you determine that? Um, that was one thing that I'm curious about. Michael, based on our concept and our goals, that's what we decided to be the best design. We have taken some research based on some interviews of different customers who use knee braces, and we have taken a lot of the positives of what customers want and how to make that happen. So in our process, we did research individuals who do use knee braces, and based on the type of knee braces they had, we took the pros from that and put that in our design. I have a question. You said you um, have done interviews, you've done your research. Uh, where did your research, where, where has your research come from? Joey. In our community, we interviewed some people who have already had ACL injuries. And out of those individuals and with their feedback, we decided two or three different design ideas first. And we wanted to talk to um, students who were mostly a athletes who had these injuries. So about how many did you research? Michael, we are still in the sampling process. And we interviewed students here at RIT. And depending on each brace, we looked at customer reviews online to see some common, common themes that we noticed with customer dissatisfactions or things that they would like to see in knee braces. So we wanted to look at those common trends and using those that helped us decide the type of product, the brace that we wanted to create to in order to improve the individual's experience who do have ACL injuries. The question. So I can see um, what you're you're trying to sell, but who are you targeting um, versus like what is the benefit, what benefit are you going to get from making and selling this product? Joey, great question. Our target market is the individuals who use knee braces, and that's roughly 4.8 million people who use them. So we want to be able to give the opportunity to them. We want it to be based on cost because based on our research, we can't just make up a random cost or random information. We want to use real life data and real life experiences. So using that, we were able to de determine our budget from there. Corey, I used to have um, a um, hinged type brace from when I was playing football and it really wasn't comfortable. And your new design looks very clever and interesting. Uh, but the thing that I think is important was the metal part. Uh, you don't want it to be able to move left and right. It's got to be vertically straight. And so how are you going to handle that? Michael, you know how we explained the bearing system? They will be stacked within the design. So within that, there will be a small portion on the side of it, and they will be compressed so that way the bearings cannot move too much. And within the system, it will be similar to the metal hinge system that you were speaking of, except it will be a lot lighter. The plastic industry is growing. They're using a lot of things like polyester, and they're able to use that. So we're going to be focusing on um, different plastic products to be able to use in the bearing system to make it more lightweight. We haven't done the final design for it, but we do have a general concept. And if our design and our concept and our prototype does fail, there are other material options that we can use. So based on our design now, we can go with our original plan and again, we do have ideas, but the whole goal is to keep the brace simple and make sure that the bearings stay straight within the brace so then there's not too much mobility that can happen with the athlete. I have a follow-up question. You were saying that you had some ideas for the bearings that um, did you do, what kind of testing did you do? Did you do computer testing or did you do physical testing? How did you test it? Michael. You know the concept of washers, that you can stack washers and be able to connect them with some sort of material? You can move them back and forth. That is something that we tested. 
we want to be able to limit that motion. In our design, we will have the bearings in a straight system and they will be locked. If you think about production engineers and think about a production line, they move in a straight line, that's sort of the concept that we want to use and that's how we predict we'll be using that in our design. If you, if you can go back a few slides, you can see on the right here the bearing system that we'll be using. There is some flexibility in the system and that is the design that we plan on using within the brace. So I have another question. Have you looked at other products in the marketplace to see if there are similar products to what you're suggesting? Joey, we looked at over 100 different companies and there are many well-known brands that we looked at in our research and nobody has out in the market what we are anticipating what we're going to do. There are some similar concepts, but nothing that really matches our idea. Michael, there are some products that use gel, but that isn't the same idea that we have. That has a different purpose. Again, the design of those braces are the same with the gel, but as the chart that we showed you, they have the three other different braces that have different purposes. And again, we want to be able to use the, the good things from those braces and use that in ours. Okay, this next person has two questions. The first is, how do you plan to market your brace if you're successful in developing the product? That's the first question. And secondly, what is your timeline? How many months do you foresee it will take you uh, to finish the different phases on your timeline? Michael, do you want us to look at the timeline? Joey, how we're going to market is dependent on our development that we're still going to be doing. Once we just, and if you can go back to our timeline, you could see that we're trying to establish a team. And once we get that team established, we can focus on the type of marketing that we'll be doing. In the timeline, well, we know it'll take at least one year for this project. What's important is that we design and do the prototype first so that individuals don't injure themselves. If we quickly make this product and put it out on the market, p individuals still might hurt themselves during sports. So we want to make sure that it is first safe so then we know that our customers uh, will be safe while they are using the product. Michael, what's important is liability. We want to make sure that we have a good product first. So when individuals are using this in the physical activity that they don't hurt themselves. So again, what we want to do is take people's feedback and pros from other braces and take that to make this our own. Okay, this is seriously the last question. Okay, if you were to choose the top three, suppose um, what, what would you do if you were in the top three, what would you do with the money if you won the money? Joey, good question. We would like to continue with this project and our, our vision is to use plastic materials. We would expand our team and we would try to pick individuals who are willing to work on the team. We want to come up and develop and do our prototype, and we want to have as many people invest in this as possible to expand our team. So our first step would be to expand our team. Michael, that's one baby <coughs> step, but that's the first step. Using that money, we want to be able to fail first. We want to test our product first, see if it fails, make everything right, and then eventually we'll be able to put it on the market for individuals to use. Thank you. Let's give Yovada a round of applause. Okay, so now we're going to see a commercial from ZVRS, which is talking about Women's Month. Women's History Month.
Are we set, judges? Okay, next let's welcome ASL Ripple. ASL Ripple, come on in. I think somebody needs to call ASL Ripple. I think they're having a last minute discussion. Maybe they're having a brainstorming session out there. Well, let me tell you a blonde joke, okay, while we're waiting. There are many blondes, including myself. So a blonde asked a brown-haired person, do you know what IDK means? And the person said no. They're like, oh my god, you really don't know? Get it? I don't know, you really don't know, IDK? what about red haired? Okay, what would I say? Hmm. Well, uh, the red hair would say, I don't know as well, right? Blondes, you know, dumb. That's what they say. Are we ready? They're running in. Here they come. ASL Ripple. Hello, everyone. Join our ASL Ripple rules? Effect. Okay, so you have 10 minutes. Uh, introduce yourself, tell us what year you are, your major, and where you're from. And then I will start the clock. You'll have 10 minutes to make your presentation. Um, there is a timer there, it doesn't seem to be working. So you can click the timer here and it will start the 10 minutes. I'll be sitting on the side. It's your responsibility to pay attention to the time. I will stop you once 10 minutes st arrives, and then we will give the judges their opportunity to ask you questions. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourselves. All right, hello everyone. My name is Haley Leith. I'm from Indiana, and I'm an accounting student. Hello everyone, my name is Fran Lee. I'm from New York City specifically Manhattan, uptown, not downtown. I'm a sixth year student here, and I'm in biochem. Hello, everyone. My name is Dara Levy. I'm from Indiana, and I'm a third year nutrition major. Are you ready to begin? Good luck. I'm going to start the timer right now. Franley, hello, thank you for this opportunity today. We have gone through and done our introduction. We do want to talk about ASL Ripple and we'll tell you what it's all about. We have noticed four gaps in ASL interpreters' competency, and that depends on ASL interpreting agencies as well as individual interpreters. We've noticed gaps in receptive skills, sign language production, facial expression, and classifiers. Sometimes there are scientific terms that are thrown out there and the interpreters miss them or don't know how to receptively understand those or produce them themselves. Sometimes we have students here at RIT who are cross-registered and they're in many different classes. The interpreters get there and they get misinformation or they try to talk about things within a different discipline. When it comes to facial expression, sometimes interpreters move their eyebrows but not use their mouth morphemes or they do the opposite. And finally, when it comes to classifiers, sometimes you talk about maybe driving a car and you have a student who's signing very quickly and the interpreter isn't able to grasp that themselves or the professor is talking about driving quickly and the interpreter isn't able to, pro to adequately produce that in sign language. So we have noticed those four gaps in our interpreters and we do wanna make sure that our interpreters are able to have a better rapport and understanding of deaf consumers that they work with. Dara, in 2013 and 2014, the Department of Access Services here at NPID worked with the NPID president, Gerard Buckley, to get a grant, and that was used then to set up an ASL consultant 
department within the Department of Access Services, specifically to help out with our sign language interpreters. It was developed by Kip Webster and Gerard Buckley. In 2014, the actual service was implemented, and the ASL consultant services really provide two different types of services. You're able to have one-on-one -on -one sessions, and we're also able to do open lab hours. One-on-ones with interpreters, we actually have nine ASL consultants currently this semester. They have various backgrounds and disciplines, majors, so they're able to sit in one-on-one -on -one meetings and sessions with interpreters and talk about different things, maybe classifiers. So an interpreter will come in and say that they need to work on classifiers, so the ASL consultant might bring them a video or ask them to do various things to help them improve those skills. When it comes to the open lab hours, there are different time slots that were available over in Cary Hall across campus, and interpreters can come in maybe after class if they felt like they didn't understand the concept or they weren't accurately able to portray something in their class. The consultants are available to help them with feedback and to give them sign suggestions and various things like that. Haley. Now we're going to talk about the budget. For the past four years that the ASL consultant department has been running over an NTID, we've gotten various budgets. This year we were able to get $15,000. Now Kip is my boss and the two of us worked to actually set up a more detailed budget to make sure that we weren't going to go over that $15,000. We had to make sure that we were going to provide workshops, but we had to limit that. We were able to provide three and the interpreters loved it. We also had to establish an hourly rate. When we have entry level positions, our student, our ASL consultants get $10 an hour, and that does raise after their first year. We do get together as well with our staff meetings, me leading them on a biweekly basis. And Kip and I really were able to look at the budget and try to make sure that we weren't going to go over that 15,000. This year, so far, we've spent $13,719.33. Dara. We do have the ASL consultant service available, but now we're trying to figure out what to do with this idea and how to expand. We did realize that we wanted to be able to do more outreach. We wanted to reach the rest of the Rochester community, the US community, and just interpreters in general. We are planning to use different links, and I mean, here on campus we have a website that has different links for STEM fields, philosophy, science, various things like that. So we're able to have our interpreters look at those, see the different signs, and how to produce those. We also want to add in some sort of hotline chat with that website, though. So if there's an interpreter maybe in California who doesn't know how to present an idea with the proper classifiers, we'll have interpreting consultants here in Rochester who are available to, via video chat, sit down with our ASL consultants and our interpreters, just like the ASL interpreters here on campus can do. We also want to do collaboration with agencies and video relay service companies. And finally, we want to be able to expand out into other associate and bachelor degree programs in colleges around the country. Those are our hopes on how to expand our services. Haley. Now, we did run a survey, and the reason why, we wanted to see if there was actually going to be a high demand for this service, and we wanted to make sure that we would be successful as well. We asked a 10-question survey to VRS interpreters and agencies, as well as individual independent interpreters. We asked them if they did recognize a need to improve their sign language production, and 30 of the 31 who answered did choose yes. We do have that ability here already established within our service. We then asked how difficult it is for you to find resources to improve your ASL skills. 13 people chose that it was hard, while 17 remained neutral. Our service would be easy for them to find those resources. Once we know that we have our service available, we ask those individuals if they've received the ASL consultant service. 12 of them said yes, 19 said no. If the ASL consultant service were available online though, we asked if they would be interested in partaking in that, and 27 said yes, while only two said no. 
So we do believe that this will be successful and we have an idea that it will be a high demand around the United States. Franly. We do have some projected prices in mind over the next five years and beyond. We are focusing first on the individual. For example, if there's an interpreter who wants to sit down, they would be able to make a per hour payment or per session payment. Maybe they want to improve their receptive skills or their classifiers, any of those four gaps that we talked about at the beginning. That would be $10 per session. And that is, again, based on that idea that Haley mentioned of the in of the entry level consultant earning $10 an hour. We do also want to make sure that we'll have individuals who are actually able to afford our services, which is why we're thinking $10. We do want to make sure that we'll have enough practice and we'll have enough usability for this. Once we have those individual sessions, we'll also be able to contract with agencies and colleges, and that will depend on the number of clients that we have and what the goals that those interpreters want to accomplish are. Finally, we're going to be considering having a website with a subscription plan so that we'll be able to provide those services online to interpreters all over the country. And again, we do want to make sure that we have the high demand that we're looking for in the per session and the contracting before we reach out for those online subscriptions. But all three of those are in our future. Haley, I do want to add as well, if we were to have an individual contact us who we don't know, we actually had someone contact us from like the Department of Education in California. They had an interpreter who failed the EIPA, which is an Educational Interpreting Proficiency Assessment. They noticed that they had various gaps and they wanted to work on, so they're looking for various resources and how they can improve and continue practicing. They actually heard about the ASL consultant service that we offer here, and they reached out to us for help. We're also planning to be at conferences, like there is one this summer. There is an individual from the Interpreting Education Program here at NTID who is going to be leading that, and it's actually a conference based on mainstream education. We're planning to go and present about our services to see if we can help interpreters who work in mainstream education environments as well. Friendly. Like we mentioned, we do have high demand and we want to make sure that we are focusing on the gaps that interpreters currently have. We also want to make sure that we're working on the life of our interpreters as well as our deaf consumers. We want to be able to make sure that all of our interpreters can best match the language needs and language skills of our consumers. Thank you for your time. Okay, are there questions for our team, ASL Ripple? You said you have 16,000 plus interpreters uh, around the U.S. So how do you plan to advertise your business concept to the interpreters external to Rochester around the U.S.? And how are you going to convince them that your services are worth paying for? Haley, we do plan to reach out directly we do feel as though this is a need for interpreters and we're planning to just reach out, see if individuals would be interested, we can explain what our idea is and move from there. I have a follow-up clarification. How will you market to the interpreters? How will they find out about you? Haley, I will be emailing and reaching out personally. Well, how will they find you? Franly, through networking. For example, like Haley was just talking about the there's actually an NTID advisory group and they had reached out. We were able to give them our business card and we do know that there are various conferences coming up. There's actually one happening in Connecticut this summer. There's one here at NTID. And we also have just the Department of Access Services here on campus. We have our boss, Kip, who we can use his network and promote through the various networking channels that we already have. You said the price per session would be $10. How long would one session last for? Um, and what would the cost be to provide the $10 that you will receive for those services? Friendly. So the 
time of the session would really depend on the information that the interpreter is looking for. We would also need to understand which of those four gap areas we're working on. I don't know if Haley, you want to expand upon that? Sure, we really do want to focus on improving interpreters' skills and proficiency. We want to make sure that the interpreters as individuals are improving. We do want to, as deaf individuals, benefit as well, but really the point is, interp is interpreters and improving their skills. So yes, we do want to make sure that we are gaining profit from each session, but it's going to depend. We're also going to have a separate account that's going to focus on workshops and things like that, but the $10 per session is just that per session. We'll also have contracts available. So I have a question. When you hire the person to provide that consultation, how much are you going to pay the person who's the consultant per session? Dara, we already have ASL consultants. We are hoping to hire more moving forward because it's a great opportunity for our students. But again, they will be providing, they will be gaining per session. Uh, we already have an hourly rate that NTID pays us, so we're already under NTID. So the money, that $10 per session, would go into an account, and that account would be used for various things, like hiring new ASL consultants and providing workshops. Haley, like Dara just said, we are under NTID and DAS, but this is going to be completely student-run. Right now, I'm the student manager, and I run everything. I do have meetings with Kip. I talk to him, but he completely lets the actual department within the ASL consultants be student-run. He is there for support if we need it, but it's completely run by all of us NTID students. Franley, and actually related to the accounts, uh, we would not be using the same account for both. We would have the account that we're gaining that $10 per session from, and then the account that we actually pay our consultants for. So that account would be used for things like transportation, running that online website, subscriptions, hosting workshops, various things like that. But the account that we pay our consultants for would be completely separate. That's from NTID, and that's how we actually make our hourly rates. So we'd be charging individuals for sessions at $10 a session, but what that looks like will be detailed later. This is just the basic foundation. And Haley, this is all based on the research that we're going to be continuing as well. You mentioned considering a subscription to the website, so I am wanting to figure out if you have an idea what the charges for that would be. Haley, we do want to develop the website first. We want to see how much demand is going to be there. Because if we do have subscription, we'll have to have discounted fees and really run all of the numbers. We don't have any statistics for the website yet because we haven't started any sort of marketing for it. We do want to make sure that we have everything ready. We don't want to risk it all and lose it all off the bat. So we want to get that website developed. And then once we have that and we start hosting those sessions, we'll be able to get more statistics and figure out how much would be a good subscription plan. Question. So if you were to win one of the top three prizes this evening, what do you plan to do with the money that you would win this evening? Dara. We are planning to go to various conferences this summer. We're also planning to work on that website and we're planning to partner with the Department of Education in California to do that. So this would help with our first steps moving forward. So I've got two questions. So ASL Ripple, why did you choose that word? Um, so can you tell us the story behind the name? And then my second question is, how do you make sure that ASL covers the variation within cultures and within signing the signing community? Friendly, I can answer the second part if you want to answer the first, Haley. Haley, sure. Actually, there is a little bit of a story behind the name. We got together. We started discussing what sort of name we wanted. We knew that we wanted ASL to be able to expand out, and when we were thinking about various names, we were thinking about that idea of Ripple, because the impact of our services, we are expecting to really branch out into all of America, and we're expecting that to basically be a Ripple effect, to continue popping up around the country. So there is a story, and it's basically just the Ripple effect happening around the country. Franley. For various dialects and things that you were talking about, Julian, 
we do already have consultants from various disciplines. We have engineers, we have science, we have don't nutrition, nutrition majors. majors. Dara says, don't forget nutrition, right? We have math majors, we have various academic majors, and we also do recognize people of color or individuals who have disabilities and how they approach sign language. For example, uh, people approach me asking about Hispanic sign language. Often they ask me for background information and I'm able to do that. However, there are other individuals who might not be. So we're able to really network and reach out to each other to provide the best service possible. We wanna make sure that we have ASL consultants from various walks of life and various backgrounds who are going to be able to provide the best services possible. And we also do have those bi-weekly meetings where we'll be able to discuss and figure out how to best approach new ideas that do come in. We do really value culture and wanna make sure that we are meeting all of those needs. So what kind of qualifications do you, do the ASL consultants have? Haley. You must be a native signer. You do have to have had experience of using an interpreter in the classroom, actually having a rapport with interpreters so that you know what working with interpreters really look like. You also just have to have good basic people skills. If not, you won't be successful in your job. You also have to have a 3.0 GPA minimum, plus be a cross-registered student. And that's really our hiring process and qualifications right now. Okay, let us give ASL Ripple a round of applause. Thank you. So we are gonna have another commercial by Z. And this is Paint with Frank. Saw everyone was seeing themselves waving. You're famous, I want your autograph. I saw you waving back there. Can I get your autograph after this? All right, we are going to introduce our next team and they are Small World Vet. You all know the rules today? 
Connect, share, explore. Small right, world. You have up to 10 minutes. I'm going to start the time and then I'm not going to warn you. You are all responsible for looking at the time. There is a timer up here. You can look out on the podium. I'm just going to leave that up here for you. If you do go over 10 minutes, though, I will stand up and interrupt you, and then the judges can go on with their questions. And Ren is asking, are the questions involved in that 10 minutes? No. You'll have questions after your 10 minutes. So now if you can go ahead and do introductions, tell us where you're from and what your major is, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Well, we're practicing sign language for her, so we need the captions. Okay, okay. just do your year and major. Okay. And also where you're from. Okay. All right, go ahead and get started with your introductions. Hi, everyone. We're Small World That. I am Rachel from California, and I'm in business. My name is Sarah. I'm from the Rochester area, majoring in international studies. Hi, I'm Ren from Chicago, also majoring in international studies. And my name is Priyanka, and I am majoring in computer science. I'm from India, and I'm a graduate student. All right, perfect. You're ready to go. Good luck. Ren, so you know the deaf community around the world is really a small world community. When we meet other deaf people, we love to connect and chat. It doesn't matter what location people are from, what language people are speaking, and what age they are. We can understand each other. Isn't that right? Sarah's saying, yes, but we have one problem. There's no central place for deaf people around the world to connect. So you might think Facebook, but Facebook really has a lot of um, different agendas and we want one agenda be to be the deaf community we want to be able to find other deaf people in the world so here we go we have a video for you
we made this website for a month and you can sign up and um, we can show you what it looks like and so we're going to do a demonstration right now. Sarah, are you ready? Let's start our adventure. You can sign up through Facebook for security purposes or Google. Uh, we want to make sure that you are the right individual. And so we have the world map and you can click on different countries. So for now, why don't we just start with the United States. We are working on developing outlines of the states and that's going to be a future implementation. And we're hoping to have the different numbers of members in each area shown on the map as well. Um, but if you're going to travel to an area, you're going to want to click on that area and click on it. And so here's an example with me. It shows my name, uh, w Rachel's name. It shows her name, where she's from, and what languages she knows. There are also filters that you can use. If you want to host a deaf person, you can check that. If you don't mind going out and you know, engaging with them, going out to eat and meeting with them, you can check those things. And you can also, there is a um, matching thing to find a friend or find an event. Um, th there are open events, so for example, if there's poker night in one area, or like for example, the Deaf Club in Rochester might post their events here. And so for all of this to work, we are going to need some things. And Rachel's saying, so let's talk about our business plan. For our marketing plan, we are going to have a lot of beta testers uh, in the Rochester area and also in Washington, D.C., California, Austin. We want people around the country to be our beta testers. For what, First of all, we want them to learn about the website. and We'll use that as a marketing tool, but we also want their feedback. And we're going to get their ideas. We're going to have uh, promotional ideas. We'll host events across the country, California, here at in Rochester at NTID, and of course we're going to use social media. We have a Facebook page, and um, you'll see more promotional information going through social media as time goes on. The cost for the website, well, there are three main costs. We have the domain hosting for the website that itself. It's $60 a year, but the m bigger cost is in the web and app development. But you can't just develop a web site or an app. You have to maintain it after that. And so the, ma the maintenance will be a monthly maintenance fee of several hundred dollars. How we're going to earn revenue are by three different ways. We're go there's going to be a sign-up fee. We wish, we wish we could offer this for free. But it will be a 99 cent a month or 9.99 yearly. And so if um, people wanted a higher chance to meet some new people, there, could, there are different levels, and so there would be fees. And so there would be check boxes that you would check off, and we would use identification to make sure that you're matched correctly, and there would be a verification process. And often we would have like hands-on travel or different companies, so people who are using the website They'll see the new products and services, and we'll get our revenue through advertisements that way. Financing is important. We need investors, um, and so um, not only in regular investors, but we want um, people to try their products and services as well. Crowdsourcing is another, you know, Kickstarter-type funds, uh, awards, the free membership, or things like that, and so they can become marketing tools if we have t-shirts or what other type of things that we um, also distribute via crowdsourcing. And then the goal of the future, I in the future, is to have a lot of growth. And so our timeline is very aggressive. Um, we developed the website in only a month, and so we are focusing on all the uh, different parts of our timeline. We think uh, we'll be done with that in June, and then we'll be beta testing over the summer and making our adjustments while we're at the same time developing the app. And I think we're going to be ready to go live in September. But we're not going to rest on our laurels. We want to expand. And so we want to uh, add a video feature so people can actually video chat and meet each other that way before they travel. And so connect through video chat and develop some other opportunities, maybe here at NTID, maybe with the marketing team uh, or business team as well. So we have expansion plans as well. Ren, so those are our plans, but what are our goals? Our goals are to bring people together in one place here at, at Small World VAT. 
so it's to connect, share, and explore. And it's not just for international people. It's many benefits for the local community. So for example, Rochester already has a very large deaf community, and there are a lot of deaf events going on in the community, but many people are unaware of the variety of events that can happen. So this would be a place where all those events can be posted for the local community and the local communities around the world to grow and interact. So one larger community exploring anywhere in the world. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions from the judges? I do have a question. That was a great presentation. It was very visually engaging. But my question for you is that you did mention verification. verification. How do you plan to do that verification? Are you going to be using a third party vendor for that? Or what are you planning to do for that? Rachel, we're going to do it ourselves. There are three parts. They're going to send us their government ID. We'll take a picture of that. And we'll make sure it's the same as the profile name. Also, the address verification, meaning we're going to mail a postcard with the code, and they have to put the code into the system, or we'll text it so they can receive the code, so we can verify their contact information, and we'll do that ourselves. I have a follow-up to that question. How can you ensure security and privacy? Sarah, we're going to write a terms and condition for everybody who participates in the website. Rachel, and also we're going to upload them and people need to agree to them. True, but you still do have to have some sort of security and protection to prevent any sort of hacking and identity theft. Do you have a plan for that? Well, the address wouldn't be on the website. They're going to mail that to us and we're going to mail them a postcard. Once they verify um, that they are the individuals, we're not going to post their address or anything online. So we want to keep everything safe. We want people to meet in public. Um, so we're, we're going to have different tips to keep people safe. And Sarah's saying verification also will be requiring $5. So we want to make sure that they pay for the verification. Ren saying also we're going to be reviewing things from the other members. If, if people review and say they have a bad experience, then that will be posted and it will be open and aware for everyone. How are you planning to sell yourselves? How are you going to be able to do this uh, on social media and other websites? And then how are you different from those other websites that are out there? Sarah, there's really no uh, competition. The only one is really, um, Facebook really isn't the competition, and there are some deaf small travel agencies, but there really isn't, isn't anything like what we have here. And so um, really, Ra Rachel's saying, and also Facebook, while there that is social media, there isn't anything like this. So I travel, and um, I'll look for different places in the country, and sometimes I feel like I'm not comfortable telling people some information and sometimes I am, but I'm really not sure if I know the person that I'm interacting with. So we feel that this website is an appropriate way for people to share information, connect with one another, and find out information. Everything in one stop shopping, one central hub. How do you divide your work between the four of you? Rachel, I'm focused on business. Sarah, I'm focusing on design and creativity. Patel, I'm website, I'm the website development, ran on maintenance. Rachel is saying, <laughs> Priyanka developed the website from scratch, and she did that in a month. I have a question related to SEO, search engine optimization, like Google. Uh, if you get your name out there on Google, how are you going to make sure that you're up there? at the top, you know? So do you plan to make sure that your website is going to be there on that first page in searches, or what's your plan for that? Well, we haven't launched yet, and we're not public, but um, we're going to connect with deaf travelers and um, the signing community, sign lounges. So we have different words, keywords that we'll put in there, maybe hearing interpreters, hearing people who want to learn as well. They're welcome. 
Ren saying, we're going to first focus on social media and we want to make sure that we get everything developed in a private way and then we'll go public later. We're gonna have time for two more questions. You mentioned doing a beta test with a beta group. How are you going to be selecting the individuals in that? Are they going to be signing up? Are you going to be reaching out to individuals specifically or what's your plan on getting those beta testers? Rachel, we'll have the sign up here. And also, Imagine RIT, people can sign up at Imagine RIT. <laughs> Come and sign up, because we will be exhibitors. Um, I'm from California. We've got friends in Austin and DC. So we're going to have our friends who are not here in Rochester sign people up in their locations. And then we're going to ask you know, those people to get the word out and then share information beyond, uh, and also through our website. If you end up being one of the top three teams tonight, what are you going to do with the money that you're given in that prize package? We're going to invest in developing the web. There are a lot of pages and a lot of navigation that still needs to be developed, and so we're going to invest in the website and app development. Great. Thank you all so much. Great job. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. Okay, we do have a commercial. Our next commercial is the NTID 50th. Who's coming this summer to the reunion? Who's coming? Okay, I'm seeing more hands. I hope if you haven't registered that you register soon. It's $100 if you register before. It's $125 if you register at the event. That was very cool. Way to go, NTID. So we are looking for volunteers to be interested uh, in the NTID 50th. We're, um, if you're, you can go to the website and click on the website and tell them that you're interested in volunteering. We have two more teams left this evening. And so the next team we're going to be welcoming is Body Easy. So we are looking for body e easy. Let's bring that team in. Here they are. We got your back. If they need help bringing something in. Okay, before you begin, let me explain the rules. The rules are that you will have 10 minutes to present to the group, um, and the introductions do not are not included in the 10 minutes. I will start the timer. You're responsible to watch for the time. You have up to 10 minutes. Um, if you go over 10 minutes, I will interrupt your presentation, and then we will move forward to the Q&A. First, please introduce yourself, your name, where you're from, what major you are, and then you can begin. Hello everyone, my name is Evans. I'm a second year 
and I am majoring in CIT, Computer Information Technology. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Hello, everyone. My name is Tony. I'm a fourth year student in industrial design, and I'm from New Jersey. And hello, everyone. Beautiful people here in the audience. My name is John. And I am a first year graduate student in professional studies, and I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Nice to meet everyone tonight. Good luck. I'm starting the timer now. Our team name is Body Easy, and we do abbreviate that to BE, Body Easy. John. Before we actually got started with Body Easy, sorry, got to protect our mannequin. He is our lifesaver here. All right, I think he's okay. So we were getting together and brainstorming on how we would be able to benefit the community. And we realized that there are many health issues. And those health issues typically start with physical activity. We tried to look further into that. We did some research. We collected some data. And we realized that there are many individuals who do physical activity, but they don't want to because they have no confidence in it. They don't have any exciting moment. They aren't excited for physical activity. So our objective is giving great potential can achieve physical activity. We want to be able to improve confidence so that individuals feel as though they can kill it when it comes to physical activity. And we will continue explaining more during the rest of this presentation. I do have to tell you all, actually, uh, you know, I know everyone in this room was probably a college student. You had to move in and move out of your dorm and apartment, right? Sometimes the elevators didn't work. You had to go up the stairs. And, you know, believe it or not, sometimes you got there, you met your roommate, it was a great year, and then all of a sudden it was time to move out. And it was a pain in the butt, wasn't it? But you knew you had to continue moving no matter what. And often you ended up as one of those 8 out of 10 Americans who experience back pain. I myself have experienced it. And it's a suffering, debilitating thing when it happens to you. You see right here, there are two different signs. There's a check and an X. And that shows you the proper way to lift. I'm sure that you've already been told by doctors and other medical professionals the proper lifting form. You don't bend at your back. You have to bend and squat at your knees and lift up. Use the proper form. But many individuals still don't follow that, follow that just because of whatever reason. And it is frustrating. Maybe they feel frustrated. They just want to get ahead with their moving. And they end up as one of those 8 out of 10 Americans. And when we talk about our cost analysis, we have met with various individuals who've shared their experience with us and the cost involved as well. Many people experience back pain. They go to the doctor. They ask for physical therapy. And obviously, that's not free. It really adds up. Often, there are physical assessments that are required. Uh, there are individuals who do physical labor for their job, like working at FedEx, UPS. Sometimes there are lawsuits that happen as well, and there is a hundred billion dollar within the indirect annual cost of back pain all over America. And not only does back pain affect individuals, it affects families and communities as well. You think about a family with a new baby. If you hurt your back and then you're unable to care for your child, that's going to impact your entire family. Tony. I do want to explain what Body Easy actually is. We've created a wearable exoskeleton that has lifting assisted systems within it that are designed to prevent back injuries and help individuals lift with no extra effort to reduce the pressure on one's back. Evan. If you're wondering why use Body Easy, you can look here at the five things on our slide. 
you look right here at the actual prototype we have, there's no motor or battery involved. We'll even turn it around for you to see. We are dependent on spirals and springs within the system. It's going to be affordable. We're also using 3D printing, which has really helped with costs as well as with weight. It's not going to be heavy like some of the other systems that are out there. We are using a plastic that can be 3D printed. It can also be used anywhere at any time. You don't have to worry about charging it and making sure that it's ready to go or only having a limited timeline that you can use it. You can wear it 24-7 if need be. And what John was just saying about that $100 billion in indirect expenses every year, that really is a headache. And that's why we here at Body Easy are working to reduce that headache for all, as well as the costs involved with back pain. We do want to make sure that life can get better. Tony. We do have three existing companies that are currently our competitors. We are working, though, to be better than the three of them. The first one is the Ergoskeleton by Strong Arm Technologies. You are able to move fairly freely, but you are still limited in your actual mobility. You can bend down, squat down, and move left and right, and that's pretty much it. The design that we have, our system, is really forcing you to use your legs to squat and use that proper form like we were talking about to make sure that you have a more safe form when it comes to any sort of physical activity. That strong arm, that first competitor, really isn't free. You don't have free movement within it. So if we had that competitive matrix, you would see that we would have an check and they would have an X. We do want to make sure that we really do have that safety feature built in, which does come with the body easy. Second, we have the HWEX by Hyundai. There are people who are various sizes and will be able to support those individuals. Right now, we can go up to 300 pounds and six and a half feet. And we do have an adjustable aspect within the body easy. But the HWEX is much more limiting. It's for people who are only up to 175 pounds, and their height can only be five feet tall, which is very limiting for many individuals. But the body easy will be able to fit many more people. Evan. You can look right here at some of the groups that would be in our target market. We have hospitals, warehouses, moving companies, plus more. It's not just those three. There are many others within our target market. Our goal at Body Easy is to be able to provide many companies with what, with what they need. And they need this because we'll be able to reduce time when it comes to doing physical activities. Health insurance quite right now gets to be quite expensive. We'll be able to reduce costs with that. And we'll also be able to help our employees do better and have a better performance with their work life as well as their everyday life. I actually used to work at UPS, and there were many boxes that had to be lifted and moved. Many of them were quite heavy. And we would have maybe five to three people working. And sometimes there was time wasted. But how would we be able to improve that would be by wearing this body easy brace so that we would be able to not depend on those four or five other people. We would be able to better delegate and manage our time by moving more efficiently. Tony, I do want to explain what the components of Body Easy are. We do have extended and expandable springs. We have a cable. We have 3D printed objects. And we have hand and, hand and glove aspects for protection. And all of these are feasible through kinetic energy. Sometimes you go to the gym and you work out and you see the weights being lifted and you can see those cables moving as you use the machine. The same concept and that same technology is incorporated into Body Easy. We'll be able to, again, protect against any sort of back pain that comes from heavy lifting. Evan, our timeline for right now, we are anticipating about a week to develop our prototype and meet the market. We want to make sure that we're going to be able to meet with engineers and potential consumers to get feedback and improve upon our product. Before we take that week, though, we have been working for a year now to figure out what the best sort of idea and product would be 
to expand and develop our business. We've had many ideas and many brainstorming sessions that have led to Body Easy and what you see here in front of you today. Tony, you can see the final design, the final concept up here. There are three different perspectives of it. And we are planning to expand upon this more from this point forward. This right here actually uh, has computer parts that we were able to try to get a more visual understanding of what we would be able to do. If the computer was able to run it, we knew that the prototype would also be able to run it. Thank you all for your time today. So judges, do you have questions? Could you explain what you mean, what, you, what that white part of the actual harness does? Tony, like we were talking about before, we have the cable. So there's one of these white pieces on each side to control that cable. And it is easily moved. We do want to make sure that it's comfortable. And within the design, we're going to make sure that it's as comfortable as well as easy to use as it can be. Have you figured out what it costs to actually produce, and then what would you sell each of these for? Tony, that's a good question. We do know that there are companies out there who have similar products, but they're quite expensive, and we're working on a more affordable product. I would say we're hoping to max out at $300, but probably it'll be less than that. We are still working on actually producing the parts and finding that cost, though. John, actually, if you don't mind if I add to that, uh, we were just talking about those three companies when it comes to our competitors. The first company on the left was expensive. I believe it's about $1,000 just to rent one. Not to own one, to rent one. $1,000. That's incredible. That's just a headache thinking about it, right? So we do like the idea of being able to rent, but we're thinking buying and keeping it is better, especially because we'll be able to 3D print for a more affordable cost. There's no motors, there's no batteries, it's basically just the spring, and we should be able to provide that for much more affordable. We'll also be able to provide a warranty, and we do want to make sure that we're satisfying all of our customers. I hope that answered your question. I have three questions. You said it was $1,000 for the um, competitor on the far left. What were the costs for the other twos? So the one was 1000 for renting. Uh, that's the most popular. The other two, I don't have an exact number. Those aren't released, but they're also not as popular. I do assume that they're not as affordable, but that's just the information that I have now is the $1,000 for renting that one on the left. The other two, though, uh, they don't have any data available for the public, so I'm not entirely sure. Thank you. So now on to my second question. Have you tested this on individuals, on people? How do they feel with it? Have you tried it on different people in different sizes? Tony, yes. We have t uh, tested it on individuals who are tall. We've also been able to adjust it when it was uncomfortable for them. This red thing here on the back, you can see, we're able to move up and down to best fit any individual's proportions. John, I do want to add to that. I love that question. If you look at this uh, part on the back, it does have about six different adjustable features right now. And you also see the gloves on the hands. We do want to make sure that individuals will be able to have a biomechanically proper and comfortable way to wear the device when they are actually wearing it. This is a rough idea, and we're getting better every day. Oh, and actually, I do want to add as well, another example here on the front, uh, we do want to make sure that there is something there to be secure. But we do know that there are individuals who are small, there are individuals who are larger. We don't want it to be uncomfortable or improperly fit for anyone. So we do think that the system that we have on there now is a good fit and will work for all. And we did add that buckle and we've been trying to figure out how to uh, have actually a reflective aspect for safety reasons as well. And that isn't any sort of required thing, 
You know, it's up to you if you actually wear it or not. And if you're outside, if you're inside, if you're outside in weather, or outside in the sun, it'll be completely different. However, the entire device is portable. And we, like we mentioned at the very beginning, it's you're able to wear it 24-7. It's not like a two-hour thing that you are out of luck once the battery runs out. You can wear it 24-7. But do remember, this is just a prototype. So can we look at the back, please? Can you tell me how much weight is on that person's back? Tony, I would say it's light. Uh, maybe un it's under 20 pounds. It's not heavy like some of the other ones that have metal parts. Again, this is 3D printed with light parts. Okay, so just food for thought. Some people who have had surgeries wouldn't be able to bear that kind of weight. They can only bear maybe up to 10 pounds. People who have had back surgery, for example. So just some feedback for you. Um, they wouldn't be able to lift more than 10 pounds, so they wouldn't be able to bear that weight. So I'm just wondering how you would work with that type of individual. Evans, remember, this is just an example. Um, previously, I talked about the 3D printing, and it very much is light. You know, you don't have to worry about any sort of bulky thing on here. Right now, it does look a little bit bulky, but the final product won't be. Again, just because everything will be 3D printed. It's all plastic. It's very lightweight. Nothing is heavy. If someone really is unable to lift or struggles with something like that, we will be able to work one-on-one -on -one with our customer to provide the best quality that we can. John, that really is a good question, but it's a tough question, so thank you for asking that. Within Body Easy, we aren't just going to have one product on the market and be done. We're going to continue learning. So like he just said, we can have this model released and we can work on another model. If we know that we need something more lightweight, we can work on that. And once we get those reviews, we'll continue working on whatever it is that we need to based on our customer feedback. So I have a question. So on your first slide, you mentioned eight out of 10 injuries and that many injuries cost about $100 billion in indirect costs. Where did you get that number? John, that's a great question. That's just a rough estimate of individuals who've reported their injuries or had some sort of lawsuit. Uh, and I am a finance major in my background. Uh, so that $100 billion isn't necessarily just from back injuries, but sometimes it's from wrongful lawsuits and issues like that. And that number will continue growing. Uh, sometimes people really do buy things like heating packs or Icy Hot and things like that. But also remember the $1 million is here in the United States. So around the world, that might be tripled or quadrupled. I'm not sure. It's not an exact number, but it is around $1 billion. Uh, $1 billion and I hope that answers your question. Thank you very much. Let's give them a round of applause. We are going to have another commercial from Z, and it is an ASL story.
All right, we have our final team up now. This team is VTV. Can we bring VTV in the room, please? We're ready if they are. Round of applause for VTV as they come in. Come on, everyone. let's hear it. Wow, it's a beautiful crowd. This is amazing. Good Explore the you. world within yourself. All right, the rules are you have 10 minutes for your presentation. We'll start the timer and we'll leave it up here at the podium. You are responsible for the time yourself, though. If you do go over that 10 minutes, I will stand up and interrupt you and we'll go on with questions. You can go on and introduce yourself, give us your name, your major, where you're from, and what year you are, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Go ahead. Hi, everyone. I am Andrew Cho. My major is an associate's degree in business technology, and I'm from San Francisco. My name is Sammy Williamson. I'm graduating in May. I'm from Ohio and majoring in poli sci, political science. Great. Are you ready? Good luck. So here we are, VTV. This is our team. Hi, I am Andrew. I am the lead. Hi, my name is Sammy. I'm the outreach specialist. We also have Vincent, who focuses on technology, and Christina, who's focusing on operations. When you think about ASL and deaf culture, I mean, they are just beautiful. When you think about the arts and the beauty of ASL, where can we put them all in one place? When you look in the world, there are many hearing media outlets, but not really anything for deaf people. Sammy, I feel like we're always chasing hearing people. They're developing things faster and faster, and we're always chasing to try to catch up. And so we wanted to build a foundation, and we wanted to make sure that we could get captioned content, video, not in different disparate places like on Facebook or different streaming places, but in one streaming place. And that's what we wanted to set up. So we want to resolve it with VTV. VTV is a platform for all different types of streaming and media. It can benefit all signers, deaf, hard of hearing individuals, and it really can benefit all age groups from young kids to older adults. We don't just want to include films, but also social media, we want you to, there will also be facts and information that people can click on links in order to get that information. So this is a mock-up of what VTV will look like. And you would click to open that video if you wanted to watch the Heidi and her sis Heidi, Heidi and Heidi. And then you would, once you clicked on that, it would talk about what that film is about. It shows the cast, it shows the deaf talent that's involved in the film. It might talk, it, it, this is good information not only for the viewer, but for other people who are producing films and media if they want to get in contact with deaf experts. And also, um, you can decide to s expand genres or just stay with the same genre that you've been watching all along. So. Um, you can see that there is our buttons and links on the left. You can add comments, give your reviews. You can sign up um, and make comments about what you've seen. Andrew. When you look at the market size, there are millions of deaf people, millions of people who have a hearing loss. And our technology is really behind the technology which, is which hearing people are taking advantage of. Our primary target market will be individuals between 25 and 34 um, who will have an internet subscription. Our secondary target market would be individuals 35 to 55, people who are interested in the internet and people who are interested in learning about people from around the world. Sam, we're not just focusing on the US, we're focusing on um, 
not just individuals, but other institutions like education and government as well. And the, our business model is we're going to have three different approaches. People can sign up for a one month free, um, a one month free subscription, and then we'll get revenue from the ads from that one month free subscription. And then beyond the month, then they will be a paid su subscriber, and we'll get revenues from that paid subscriber. And then the other would be to contract with businesses and organizations that we could show their VT their clips on VTV. When we look at the competition, really, their VTV is a standalone player in this world. There are there are other places that stream video, but they're limited. They're not all-encompassing and don't have everything that we have. And if you look on this slide, you can see all the green checks in our column. It's nice uh, because what we want to offer, we want to focus on the deaf community, provide deaf community dedicated content, provide a social media and networking experience. Um, you know, you want to see films, but you also want to interact with other people and talk about them. And so we want to embed social media to get more dialogue and discussion, differing points of views. And also we want to provide the opportunity to start with a free subscription option. The deaf community has a lot of intersectional identities and a lot of different experiences. And so we want to build a platform that showcases the different lenses from which deaf people look at the world because it's very interesting to uh, see the impacts of the person's identity lens on how they uh, interact with the content. Looking at this matrix, we wanted to make sure that uh, we were hitting all of the areas in the matrix. So for example, for the new product development and new content, we already have, there's a lot of content, there's a lot of movies, there's a lot of TV shows. But when you're thinking about product development, thinking about Netflix and Hulu, um, they're, they're really lacking in the content that we're looking to provide. Uh, we have to also think about marketing. So we want to outreach to the larger world. So we want to bring in a brand ambassador. Niall is an example of somebody who has bridged the hearing world, and so he would be a recognizable figure. Also, we want to um, include interpreters and interpreting students, and then we want to focus on our public relations. We're going to think about like tabling at conferences, going to places like um, in California. We can go to deaf film festivals. We can go to conferences. And through the interaction and the word of hand, as it were, we can get the word out. Uh, we're VTV, and people often ask us, why did you call yourself VTV? And so through the interaction and the hashtag that we want to get our word out, and that's how we're going to market. Now, our timeline is we're not ready, but we are getting close. And so we have been in a lot of process. We've had people looking at this idea giving us feedback. We have been brainstorming and we have done a release. We want to do a feedback, uh, do a release and get feedback from individuals like you so we can improve our product. And now finances are very important. I mean, this is what investors want to see, right? In the first year, um, we are going, we're planning on having some subscriptions um, and then um, we're going to, from the feedback we get, need to do some more development. And so there are going to be expenses that happen in the first and second year. And then we are hoping that our sales and marketing can start to build our brand because we know in the first couple of years we won't really be an, a known commodity. But once we get to be known a known commodity and have our, Im our modifications in place, we feel that we'll then start uh, making money. Sam, we're, we've already have some uh, agreements with bad cats. And um, so we were talking with them about what kinds of films. And so that's something that you'll have to just wait and see. Um, so what we're asking for today is we need $5,000 because we need to develop a full platform. 
We also need to engage in marketing and uh, we need to build our brand awareness and get that out so people start to know who VTV is. And then the legal side of things are always very important, so we will need to make sure that the contracts we sign are legally sound. So VTV, thank you. All right, we are ready for our first question. I may have missed this, but how did you come up with that name VTV? V is a very common classifier within ASL, and so you can use that shape for many things. And so we're thinking about a platform. Um, you think about cultural and the different perspectives and using that hand shape for V. Any other questions from our judges? Yes, I do have one. Uh, I did see that on your Facebook, you've got almost a thousand likes. That's great. You talked about uh, two different expos. You went to uh, one in DC and some other one. Uh, what response did you get from the community? Sam, we went to um, different expos and conferences and we were able to get feedback from people. People asked us more about the films and they didn't really think about this film or that film uh, because you know, the movie might have just been released. And so, you know, they, they didn't know that maybe uh, that that film had deaf content in it. And so m we got more interest from people who were hearing, people who were interpreters, who uh, students who were interested, and so exposure that way. And then older people thought it was a really great idea. They thought, uh, like the uh, Deaf You Love, for example, that is an old film from the past, and so, you know, how many things from the past have we missed out on because we haven't had a place? You know, the Gallaudet Archives has them, maybe the NTID Archives has them, but they're lost to the general public. And so this would be an opportunity to showcase those types of older films. I have two questions for you. So we saw those age groups, uh, but there wasn't, what, there was 18 to 25? Why did you focus on that as your primary market? because they are sev heavily involved in social media, they're online, and so that we, we were looking at affordability and also the lifestyle. You know, people who might have children, you know, that would be an opportunity for them to get involved in VTV as well. Sam, also that group, um, they're used to subscribing from Netflix, whereas maybe their parents aren't, and so Young adults don't mind but paying subscriptions. Um, they understand how that works and they don't mind that. 35 to 55 will buy subscriptions because they'll um, let their kids use them as well. And my second question is, do you plan to put different content in there and how do you actually plan to do that? Are you gonna be just contracting with businesses to put in their own content? adding your own, what sort of agreements do you have? Do you have plans for that? What sort of legal repercussions will you have? Andrew, that is such a great question. And there's some legalities involved. So we need to have some licensing agreements in place so that we have the permission to use the content or modify it. So for example, we had the, the, pace, the faces on the page, that mock page. So we would make sure, we need to make sure that um, people couldn't steal that content either. And, and or um, to make sure that they get the royalties for the actual talent and the content. So we have to make sure that the agreements are in place. And so once we get those agreements set up, then we can expand the amount of offerings. We have to also look at the subscription agreement to make sure that we can get a profit that, and we're protecting ourselves. So there are a lot of legalities involved. I'm wondering how you're going to be able to promote and market this nationwide from now until maybe a year from now. What's your timeline? Thank you. Well, what we're going to do is we've talked with different producers. And so um, by like the two that were on the slide, the Bad Cats and Paramount. And so we want to partner more with people with videos. Um, some people not just doing spur of the moment videos, but we want to 
I mean, that's possible, but also have brand ambassadors, as we mentioned, and have them showcasing and doing some advertising for us, doing the advertising on our behalf, you know, and so channel people to our site via the brand ambassadors. And I saw your finance plan up there. It showed $2,150,000 in that first year. And is that based on 45,000 subscriptions? What's your cost per month for that subscription plan? It's four ninety nine a month, ab about. That's what we're forecasting. And so we figured that that would be affordable and based on the content that we have. Any last questions from the judges? All right. Thank you, VTV. Thank you for your time. That was our final team. We are going to allow the judges to step out and deliberate, add up their scores and all of that. While that's happening, ZVRS is going to come up and draw those raffle tickets. Four of you lucky winners are about to find out who you are. If you do win, please stand up and stay here because we do want to take a picture of all four of our winners. Who's going to be doing the drawings for us? Do you want to come up and do those now? Judges, do you want to go out to deliberate? You can go outside. You can go in this back room here. It's up to you which area you go to to deliberate. Hello, everyone. Are you all enjoying yourselves tonight? Sarah's asking if everyone can do names and introductions. Don't worry, we will. Hello, everyone. My name is Brian Doan, and I work at ZVRS. I'm the Enterprise Account Manager. I work with schools and businesses, hospitals, and uh, students. If you're out there and ready to go out on co-op and you're looking, uh, please get in touch with us. I do have a VP that I can bring to the various locations you might be working on. Hello, my name is Micah. And I am in charge of the entire Northeast. Uh, if you need any sort of product from ZVRS, please get in touch with me. If you have any questions about any products or you need one yourself, you need some sort of support, I am here for you. I actually just moved back to Rochester about a month ago, and I'm excited to meet the Rochester community. And we are ready to welcome her back home. And hello, everyone. My name is Peter Artinian, and I work for ZVRS in New York State, Rochester, Buffalo, and Syracuse. And I welcome you all. Uh, I am your account manager. It's great to be here. I really miss NTID. I haven't been here since 82. I see someone in the audience who I came into NTID with. It's great to see you again. So while the judges are out there deliberating, uh, we actually do know that one of the judges is a lawyer, so we wonder if they're going to continue that jury discussion, if they're ever going to end their discussion. We'll have to wait and see. We do have prizes, and are you all ready to find out who's the winner? Peter is saying, I would like to keep all of these prizes for myself, but I'm just kidding. I guess we should deliver them. Brian, first we're going to do a $50 gift card. Then we'll go up to a $150 gift card. The third gift card is for $250. And our final prize of the night is a GoPro Fusion. And the GoPro Fusion is very cool. It's a 360-degree camera. 
so it does that video, but 360, it's very cool. I don't know if any of you have ever seen it before. If you have, I bet you like it. Who wants to win that? Micah's saying you can go out and explore in 360. It looks like about six, seven of you have already uh, looked for it, and it looks like a couple of you want to win it. So hopefully you'll get some more interesting videos once you do. Brian, all right, let's pick our first winner. I believe there are about 85 tickets in here. You know uh, that famous movie, May the Odds Be Ever in Your Favor? What's the name of that movie? Well, either way, May the Odds Be Ever in Your Favor. Micah, do you want to draw that first ticket? Five, eight, three, eight. Five, eight, three, eight. Again, that's five, eight, three, eight. Ryan going once. Rachel, the last four numbers. The last four numbers. Look at the last four numbers on your ticket. Five, eight, three, eight. Brian going twice. Again, that's five, eight, three, eight. Sarah saying bye bye. Okay, so that's more opportunities for the people who are still here. All right, let's draw another ticket. The last four are five, eight, eight, nine. Five, eight, eight, nine. Five, eight, eight, nine. Is that you? Come on up. Mark, did you want to take a picture of the winner? Actually, I think after we're going to need you to write down your name, but just keep this for now, and we will get in touch with you after we do all of the prizes. Because, Peter, they are still waiting for that, VP, that GoPro Fusion. So we got to keep going with all these prizes. Three, two, go. They're all watching you. All right, Peter, you pick one this time. The last four are five, eight, five, eight. We got a winner, five, eight, five, eight. Come on up. And that's a match. Congratulations, here's your gift card. Stay up front, please. Brian, go ahead and choose a ticket. And the last four are five. Are you paying attention? Is everyone looking up here? All right, the last four are five, nine, zero, six. Five, nine, zero, six. Is there a winner in the back? Come on up, 5906. Let me see that ticket for myself. We have a rep from BE, Body Easy, coming on up. Yep, 5906. Perfect. Congratulations. You can use that for your investment r money, right? All right, can we have Sarah come on up to draw this last ticket? I want to hear you. Who was who's excited? I can't hear you. I still can't hear you. No, we can't draw one. I'm not satisfied yet. That okay, wasn't loud forget enough. It. I'll just take it. You're not excited enough. Where's the excitement? Come on, everyone. Let's hear you. It's free. It's free. Who wants it? 
stand up. Who's excited? Come on. And the winner is 5853. 5853. 5853. Come on up. I, I didn't win. I'm just sitting down. Um, I think I'm going to um, decline it, and why don't you choose someone else? Thank you, though. How nice. How nice. So the next winner needs to thank him. Uh, this is for the students. I want a student to win. It's important that the students win. Peter's so saying who's going to bribe him? What are you guys going to do to win this? Oh, we lost the ticket. Are I you ready? All right, the last number is five eight five nine zero nine. Five nine zero nine. Five nine zero nine. I no, I didn't ask for a faculty member. I wanted a student to win. We have a faculty. Well, she won. Let's see. That's her ticket. Okay. Okay, you draw. And now the pressure is on me. What is this? Is everyone excited? Let's go. Get excited. <laughs> no, I'm not satisfied. Let's hear it. <laughs> All right. How about who's the most spirited win? There we go. I like that. I like that. All right. Let's draw this last ticket. You guys got to pray hard for this one. And the winner is 5879. 5879. There we go. You're excited. Let's make sure you really won. Yep, that's a match. Congratulations. We're going to get all of our winners together for a photo opportunity up here on stage. How many of you want to know who won tonight? Who wants to know who the winners are? That's it? No, you don't count. How about you up front? Who wants to know who the winners are? This is a dead crowd. Do you want to know the winners? They said they want the money. All right, all right. Are we ready? The judges have deliberated. They've come up with the final three. I do want to thank all of our judges tonight. And thank ZVRS for sponsoring this evening and this competition. Chris, wow, what an exciting evening. I have really enjoyed this. I'm really thinking back to the first year of NBI, the second, third, seeing how many changes we've had, how many positive changes. The technology has changed throughout the years, too, and I'm thrilled to see this happen year after year. We have made a decision on who the winners are for 2018, next big idea. 
first of all, like uh, we were saying earlier, everyone here is a winner. We should give a round of applause to all of our contestants tonight. What a wonderful job from all five teams. I wish we could grant everyone prizes, but unfortunately we did have to make some decisions. Third place tonight goes to, let me just double check my notes again. Third place. Ooh, this was a fascinating team. They're so innovative, so fascinating, and they really will succeed. Third place goes to Body Easy. Congratulations, Body Easy. Come on up, Body Easy. Congratulations. Thank you. We'll do some more photos after on this famous brick wall we've got here. Yeah, don't stare at me, Mark. You scared me. Body Easy, if you can wait over on the side of the stage for the rest of the prize announcements, that would be great. Everyone is getting antsy to figure out who the second and first prizes are going to go to. Second place tonight. I know you're all getting antsy trying to figure out what the future is, and we are excited to announce VTV. Congratulations, VTV. Thank you. Thanks. You guys can also wait at the side of the stage for the final announcement. That would be great. And now the moment we've all been waiting for, the first place winner of 2018, Next Big Idea. I know everyone's excited. There was a lot of deliberation. I do want to see all of these teams continue to grow. And our first place this year goes to Small World That. Congratulations. Congratulations, Small World That. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you all can thank wait at the you. side of the stage too. Yay, celebrate, sign up. We do want to say thank you to NTID for this wonderful year. We look forward to the 2019 competition. ZVRS is always excited for all of the work that our NTID students are doing, and we are thrilled to in be investing in their future. Sarah? Congratulations to our three winners. Thank you all for coming tonight, and we'll see you again when? Next year, right? Please stay and socialize with our teams while we do some photo ops. And remember that everyone here is a winner. Thank you and have a good night.